All right, for today's entertainment, we are going to be installing the septic pump. So this has been sitting here for, I don't know, year, year and a half, <laughs> you know. <coughs> that's, the way, that's the way I like to do these things. Uh, but ultimately, right inside the shop here, we built out a little space to be a bathroom. When we poured the slab, we went ahead and set our sewer line here coming out. Uh, big plans to have a bathroom in the, in the shop, but you know, it's only 100 yard dash to the house, not even that far really. So it's a non-critical sort of item, but for some reason we decided <coughs> Um, like yesterday that it was important and then of course my wife tells me last night hey it's gonna rain Monday so better hurry up and get that hole filled back in anyway yesterday I had a high school kid uh, working for me <coughs> so I put him <coughs> put him on a shovel and had him hog all this out the uh, he went ahead and broke my pickaxe which I don't blame him you can see the top that 14 16 inches is all hard packed clay that's all clay that I put here when we built the shop but underneath of it is that darker uh, kind of brown gray soil and that's the native soil very very loose sandy silty um, and actually doughy because it was wet and the more he worked around in there it starts to get to where it's like play-doh you know i've showed you that before anyway he got it all dug out yesterday i'm not complaining <coughs> um but we've got to drop this tank down in there before we drop the tank in we're going to put a little bit of gravel in the bottom I think the manufacturer calls for pea gravel. We don't have pea gravel, but we have something close. It's basically one inch and under. Uh, of course, I had to go shovel that up off the driveway, which tore up my underlayments, and I got another problem to fix. Uh, but it's the only, I don't have a stockpile of gravel. Anyway, we're gonna take out a little bit of dirt in the bottom, a couple inches. We're gonna lay a gravel pad on the bottom. We're gonna drop this pump down in there. Next thing is, because of how shallow our sewer line comes out from underneath the slab here, and where the sewer line comes off the side of that tank, that's actually a straight hole but we're actually going to have to neck over. We're gonna do a double 90, which is not great on a sewer line, but realistically, I mean, the toilet is literally right here. Like it's it's no run at all. We're not really worried about things jamming up in that corner. And even if they do, we can take that lid off and we can run a snake, you know, right back up inside of here and, and clear it. So uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. This is not a, this is not gonna be a high use. You know, it might get the toilet flushed once or twice a day. Um, not too worried about it. Anyway. So we'll have to drop that in there. We're going to, have to do a double 90 coming off that corner, which I'll show you later. And then our sewer outlet comes off of here. This is two inch and that looks like a two inch conduit also. The conduit is just for the power line, which we're gonna to have to install a plug up here. That can be done later. But our two inch outlet for our sewage comes off. This is a, this is a uh, sump pump. And then our septic tanks are actually up the hill. You can see the green, um, that's our aeration box. And then there's a clean out See the clean out just right there past the kid's slide, maybe. Whoop, right there. Yep. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna go basically just upstream of that clean out, which I think means we're gonna run pretty much right through the kid's swing set. So I have to move all that too. Uh, priority number one, obviously getting this tank set down in the hole, getting the hole mostly filled back in. Uh, and if I get all that done in, in good timely manner, I'm gonna run down the road, get the neighbor's trencher, uh, and we'll trench our way through the backyard, which will be, you know, much quicker and easier. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that's your intro. That's the plan for the day. We'll see how much I capture along the way. All right, so we've got our tank buried in for the most part. And so now what we've got to figure out <coughs> is coming, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> coming off the tank and up the hill to where it's going to tie into our main septic system. And the first thing is immediately when we come off the tank, we've got to turn about 60 degrees. And so we've got a 45 and we got a 22 and a half to make that happen. It's gonna be give or take. Uh, Cause it's not, it's not just 45 degrees off that tank. You can see it's more. Um, and we've also got to install this backflow preventer check valve. And so we're gonna put that check valve <coughs> and an access box basically right here in this hole. 
I started widening the hole out. I don't want to get the trench in here just yet, just because there's still that main water line there and a lot going on. So I'm going to widen this hole out by hand to get that valve set and that box set. Um, and then we'll get the trencher and we'll do our main cut. And so again, just to get our, our line of sight here, I've got a 300 foot tape. I just stretch the tape out. I'm going to make me, you know, doing orange lines on the ground um, just to give me kind of a guide, which I'm trying not to paint my tape major. So I'm actually spraying just beside it. And this will be just so as I'm backing up with the skid steer and working along, I can, you know, keep track of a, of a pretty even straight line. So I'll come up to here, start my trench and start going that way so that I can reach right in here beside. I'm hoping this all works out that I don't have to move anything. I don't have to move the kids playground. I don't have to move the batting net, none of it. So again, then I'll get up here to this side and I'll have to cut. Again, I'll have to hand dig right here around the main sewer line, which of course, of course it hasn't rained in like a month and a half. So this is all gonna be hard and my pickaxe is broken. But from this clean out, basically to that gutter downspout, it's pretty much straight. Our main sewer line comes down inside the wall right behind that gutter downspout. There's a sewer that comes over from the bathroom here that doesn't matter, but it ties in kind of somewhere underneath the wheelbarrow there. It wise in. So we're gonna tie in right here. This will be a funny one too, because we've actually got to turn again about 135 degrees. So we've got a, we've got a T with a sanitary elbow coming off at 45, and then we're gonna turn to 90 back towards the shop off of that. So anyway, now you can see I've got my line of sight made out here on where we're going to trench it. So I'm going to hand dig down there to set that backflow preventer in that box. And then we'll stub off of that a little bit with two inch and then we'll reduce down to inch and a half. So it's going pretty good so far. True to form, <clears throat> I've gotten a bit distracted and we've decided to add a little bit more work to the plan for today. I think we're still gonna be okay. So we've got our main line coming off the septic pump now. We've installed our check valve. This box that we have, it's only about six inches deep and that's about a foot deep. I'd really like to put a deeper box on top of it, but I mean, if we have to use this six inch box, then we'll use it. We'll just fill in on top of it with rock or mulch or something that's easy to move later if we have to. But that little valve, is, it's, it's just a flapper valve, but it's, it's a backflow preventer. It's just there, you know, so you got to have a box to access it in case for some reason you ever have to change it if it starts leaking back. That line run across the top of it there, that's a main water line that actually goes on, supplies the shop, and it will run out eventually to the barn or whatever we do out there. It's just, act, it's just a service line, really. <coughs> this line coming across from, so if you remember that box, that's what comes down, comes down, well, you can't see the pump house. Uh, there's the pump house over there. Comes down from the pump house to here, tees off, goes to the kiln, continues on forward to the shop, and tees off and comes this way. And this line is going to run all the way out along the pond and over there to the garden. So this, does, this is not on the critical path at all for today, but because we're down here trenching, we're working in this area, I didn't want to lay this sewer line in and then have to come back across the top of it later. So I'm going to go ahead and at least, I'm going to go ahead and at least get this crossover done here. And then if I have to just put a cap on that for now and bury it back up or whatever, we can find it back later. The sewer line going on up is the main focus. So uh, unfortunately, because I dug these two deep ditches and crossed over, I dug that one first. And then when I dug this one across it, it filled all that one back in, but it's gonna all be loose fill. So we should be able to shovel down through it pretty quick. But I can actually, now that if I wanted to, now that this pipe is laid in, I can go ahead and shovel some of this dirt back into this hole, except that I don't want to, I wanna be able to still pick this pipe up out of that trench for right now so that I can continue that trench. But that means I've gotta get all that pile of lumber moved because the trench is gonna go right through it. So yeah goodness problem after problem after problem we'll figure it out that they start to open the heater in them they drop then it makes more good enough all right so this is where we're ending the day today we've got our little box set in here 
So that means it's probably gonna stay instead of waiting on a bigger one. Uh, we'll just use that one. Like I said, we'll pile some mulch. Cause that dirt right there behind it's actually heaped up a little bit. It needs to be cut back down. Um, so it's really not all that low. This one over here is kind of low too, which I didn't want, but like I said, just because of how we're sloping things out, that's how it's become. Uh, so I actually had to dig it up the other day and find it back. I'll, I'll need to find some way to like put a, put a paper stone or something on top of them just so that when I can see in my driveway, I know where they're at, which this one, like I said, it'll be under mulch. It's not going to get driven over. Anyway, so we've got it all filled back in from here up to the place that basically, like I said, we've got to make our final connections up top. And then this new inch and a quarter supply line coming from here, the kids are finishing burying it in right now, which I just had a couple of sticks of pipe and a couple of couplings. So I wasn't, um, I went as far as I could go. I dug the trench, you know, as far as I, as far enough to use up what I had. Uh, and so what we'll do is we'll just get this filled back in. So at least my road is steady across here and I'll just have this open trench and hopefully within the next couple of days and we're going to town tomorrow. So we'll get some more pipe probably and lay a little bit more in, but this trench, it has to go like I said, way, way around. So we need to kind of do this in stages. We'll lay in a few joints of pipe, fill it back in, move some things around. I mean, already I had a bunch of lumber stacked in here and I had to move it all over there and over there just to kind of open this up. It's, it's actually really nice to have this open. I'm so used to this. This area back here is normally just tight clutter with just bundles of lumber and stuff everywhere. Um, so I, I prefer to have it open. I actually kind of think I like having the logs and lumber set over there, just further away along the side of the drive. Uh, so that may become something that becomes, you know, permanent <laughs> uh, for a staging area. Anyway, so here's our pipe up on the top end. And uh, yeah, we got right here where this, where this intersection was at, where I had to change directions. I thought I cut the two trenches together, but when I started digging with the shovel, that's all undisturbed. That's hard, hard ground. <laughs> so again, pickaxe will fix that. We'll get through that. And then right up here where we get close to the sewer line anyway, all this is gonna have to be picked out and um, you know, broadened out to make the hole and make our final connections. So anyway, that's it for today. I got done what I, what I absolutely had to get done. And that was just to get all the ditches filled back in down low so that when it rains and all that water wants to run down that hill, at least we haven't, shouldn't be having anything collect down there. I think I'll, uh, can try to fill in a little bit more right here beside the kids slide but it's not really super critical i may or may not probably not and i think i've been making a video about this project um running the sewer line up from the shop up here to the septic tanks and we've reached the final hardest spot um which is tying in with the existing sewer line actually coming up the hill here I think I mentioned you know that I had to change directions a few times to use the trencher that little hump of dirt right there in the middle was the one spot that I couldn't dig with the trencher and it actually turns out that <laughs> that's where my gutter drain comes through so pure dumb luck there I still hit it with the pickaxe punched a little hole in it but I didn't chew all the way through it with the trencher like I like I would have anyway we gotten in here now to the main sewer line and my solution for this, I don't know if it's right or not. I'm sure some plumber is going to tell me that, you know, I'm a hack and this is against code, but it fits the code out here on my farm just fine. We're going to cut out between this black line and that black line. And we've got this assembly that's going to go in. This assembly is a PVC nipple, the T fitting or the Y fitting, sanitary Y. Uh, I don't know if that's a sanitary Y or not, but angled Y, whatever. So we're gonna cut out this blank and then we're just gonna drop this piece in. I've gotta have enough room to drop it in and then slide it over to glue that fitting. And then I'll slide this coupling back to join here to here. Um, so you gotta give yourself a little bit of wiggle room to get in there. Like I said, I say that, I don't know if this is the right way to do it or not, but it's the only way that I know of, shy of digging up this entire, <laughs> digging up this entire line you know, 10 feet back or whatever, enough that you could have some flex and some wiggle to the pipe to be able to wedge this fitting in. But ultimately, it's gonna lay down in here like that, so to speak. And then we're gonna have a sweep 90 going off here that runs back, that comes in from the uh, shop septic. So this will be, instead of being straight horizontal, it'll be angled up slightly. 
just to incur to make sure that you know if you have it perfectly flat you could possibly have debris coming down your main line and hanging up on this y so you want to angle it up a little bit <laughs> and then to compensate for that being angled up i mean really if you could have it directly on top you probably should um, i don't think i can just because of well uh, no i'd need another if it's directly on top really if i could have had a you know a, a t going down and in could have put it directly on top but this comes off at an angle so then if i try to angle it out it doesn't match up it doesn't fit this runs due north and needs to run that direction instead of that direction anyway we're gonna angle it up enough that it's not right on the side it's not on the bottom it'll be about uh, three o'clock whatever you want to call it so I'm gonna double check my marks there. I might have to make them a little bit further apart because I've gotta have room again to drop that fitting down in there, that assembly, drop it in and then slide it over. And then basically that'll leave me with a gap here about two inches, which is what that uh, rubber coupling will cover. So let me double check my marks. And uh, yeah, then I guess it's game time. There's probably water running through this right now. I'm sure the washing machine, dishwasher, probably everything in the house is running, but we're gonna Whack it out of there, throw it in real quick, and cross our fingers. Okay, and that's done. <laughs> so, is it right? I don't know, but it is what it is. That gap, despite my best abilities to measure, was actually like close to three inches, <laughs> but it reached. Um, luckily, I didn't have to go by a six inch long coupling. That coupling's only four inches, so you really, you do gotta cut it close so anyway now my video got cut off but i'll try to hustle anyway now i'm waiting because i don't have an inch and a half sweep my neighbor's gonna pick one up he's at the store right now he's gonna pick up an inch and a half sweep this one that i was throwing in here and using it's a two inch but i'm just using it as a guide and uh then we can get that part tied in and we'll tie in the rest of the way to the shop so for now while i'm waiting on him i'm gonna finish laying in the rest of these pipes and get me up here close at least all right, well, the final connections are in. Peter got me my elbow. So there's the final coupling on the main line. And that's where I made my very final connection. I connected up here at the elbow and then I was able to pick these two pieces of pipe up out of the hole to kind of to get the coupling on one end and kind of, you know, wedge them back together and shove them down in there so it lined up real nice. And here's the top end. So you can see now how we just did that sweep coming around into the Y there. And our, our poo is gonna go whoop that way. We still got our clean out right here to get back up into the house. I don't think it'll work as a clean out to get into there. But if we ever do have anything in this line that's a problem, um, well, heck, I guess we can just go through the, we can go through the uh, sump pump down there actually as a clean out to come all the way up to this end. Um, or if we had to, we could take out the check valve and access there. So we have options. So I did not need to put a second clean out port up here. Cool, I'm gonna let this glue set and then I'm gonna run some water through it and see what happens. <laughs> 